Hi, this is Ryan, and welcome to the String Adventure Part 5. We're going to elaborate on our Room 2 code, as well as build out a little bit here on the uh, String Room Control um, class. Actually, now that I think about it, we probably won't mess around with the uh, room uh, String Room Control class, since we've already set it up. Uh, if I remember correctly, we left off with right here where we check to see if the user enters in the string room 2 if that's true then we call on the room 2 class method called get info on room 2 and that method brings us over here and I think this is where we left off and right here is where it calls this method and right now we just counted out the visit count so that way we can see how many times we're calling it I have no real strategy with that at least not yet maybe we can figure that out some other time in the future but for right now it's just mainly checking to see how many times we've been here so that way we know we're actually calling the method and then it does not after that so let's make it do something we're going to go ahead and let's add in this method right here called room to explore so we've got room to explore and this method is going to build a little bit more excitement into our uh, program here and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna I'm gonna get a big block of code and copy and paste it in here for you because I know some people prefer to get their uh, code in larger chunks so they can pause it copy it then listen to the explanation so I'm gonna go ahead and put this in here so the room to explore this method right here is going to call this public void method called room to explore and I'm going to go ahead and scroll down. I'm missing a bracket. So if you paused the video and copied it and didn't didn't work, okay, that's why. And once again, JGrasp is sabotaging my alignments. Okay, so room to explore. Right here, first thing that's going to happen once we call this method, okay, it's going to get called out of here. So remember, this method gets uh, called from the string room control class right down here. And then it's going to pass the focus of the program to this method. And this method is going to get called, so it's going to now pass the focus over to here. Okay, first things first, we just print out some information. Okay, we give them the list of directions. We're going to use a uh, for loop to go through this array right here called the directions. That was set up at the very top, in case you forgot about that. It's right up here. Mm -hmm. And then we do the same thing down here below okay why do I do that I do that because I want the user to be able to see what directions and words are up there okay um, not everybody's going to memorize all the words that you've given them to be able to use or maybe you know they don't know what to use um, if we were to get more advanced we'd have like a whole set of dictionary terms that we could um, utilize for different actions and stuff but right now since we have kind of a simplistic program we want them to have a key set of words that they can use for our program okay so we're just building this for simplicity alright next thing we are going to arrays have them store enter in list some of information. information okay so I'm going to go down here line 44 make a little space copy and paste get my indention real lined here okay so right here we are giving the message to say if you want to leave this room type in exit okay right here I put the slash colons okay because if you don't when you print out to the console it's not going to allow you to print the um, double quotation marks unless you put the slash in front of it okay then I said right over here then type in continue like so so in case you forgot that you might want to look it up on the internet to get that explanation down here we go and get their um, watch what we call it their scanner input and it looks like I didn't copy and paste all that correctly Boop, there we go alright so right here we take the entire first request that comes from the scanner object input one and then we set it all to lowercase okay we could set it all to uppercase but we chose lowercase just because that's what we do okay no big deal doesn't really matter next we want to do something with the information that they enter in for us okay so I'm gonna go down here to line 49 tab over copy and paste in this code and mm, all right okay I really apologize for this not lining up properly I don't understand why it doesn't do this okay so right here we get our first request 
input object and we're looking to see if this is true okay if the word exits in there okay so if the word exits inside of there we're going to take the word exit and assign it to the variable called first request alternate okay first request alternate which was what we um, had actually set up where we set that up right up here okay it's a string called first request and that is what the value was set when we put the um, input in but what we're doing is we're deleting everything that they typed in there in case they put a bunch of extra words and everything else so we're putting the word exit inside there for first request al alternate and which I'll show you what the strategy is behind that here later and then we say that you want to exit the room now goodbye and then we call the method game over and I can't remember if we made game over or not um, I don't think we did but we'll make that here shortly you know what we might as well make that right now right that sounds like a good idea okay so it's going to call the method game over okay easy peasy right so let's go ahead and create the method game over down here and tap over and we'll paste it in and it looks like I'm oh I didn't get it all let me get the whole copy right there we go just be patient with me there we go so there's the incomplete method game over again it's void I made it it's not public but it doesn't really matter I mean you can make it public or private or protected I just made this one up it's protected since it's not listed as anything and then right here we print out the game over message and then we call the class string room control and then we can call the program exit method right there okay and if you forgot program exit method right here is what ends the entire program right down here by using the system dot exit zero right there okay that's what ends the entire program okay and then we return out of here even though there's nothing to return but the return stops this from running it's just kind of my thing what I do to make sure it exits out properly so I bet we should be able to run the code with no issues and there we go so click on the compile button should compile if you want to go to stream room control and we should be able to run this let's go to room two and let's type in the word exit all right and it happens pretty fast I'm not gonna put anything in there to control the time which there is the ability to but we're not going to do that and right there you can see it print out you will now exit the room goodbye game over is called the system will now exit okay and looks like everything's running pretty good so let's go back and let's build upon the uh, method that we had originally started here. In this video okay it's pretty it's not too lengthy but actually it is pretty lengthy I'm lying to you alright oh no I'm not okay let's see last thing let's go ahead and I was lying to it's pretty much done right now whoops control V okay so what I did after that we're putting an else statement and right here we're going to put you did not type exit so it looks like you were stuck in my mind maze for a while evil laughter ha 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 okay so what we're doing is with this program if they don't type in exit we're not going to do anything with this method because what I want you to see is we can put another method right here below this one that allows some other code to execute and we're going to program that in the next video okay so I'm gonna go ahead and end this one it's kind of a quick easy video you might want to just compile everything make sure it works okay and you know what? let's go ahead and run it too let's go over here to our string room control let's just make sure it runs we want to go to room two and then let's type in I want to continue all right and there it types in the evil laughter statement about the mind maze and we will make that here next and you'll notice right here since the code did not issued in another method we have this line pop up it says do you want to end the adventure okay let's look at why that happens all right so right here 
we ended right here. There's nothing else to happen. Okay, game over does not get called. Nowhere else in our program. You can come up here and see this on the get info on room. Game over is not called. So where did this do you want to end the adventure come from? All right, it came from right here inside of this particular uh, method right here. Okay, that's exactly where we're at in this program. Okay, and the reason it happened was because we had the program check for room two. It looks like we want to go to room two. Then we set the focus of the program over to the room two class with this method right here. It ran through its code. It was done. So since it was done, it came back over here, and we're not looking at this else because we already had determined that that if condition was true. So we skip by that else because it's not going to happen. Then we come right back here into our code, and we ask the question, do you want to end the adventure? And I'm going to go ahead and type in yes. And the program will now exit because we typed in yes. That's true. We return out of there. And you can see that since it's true, okay, this method is called from the previous part of the program, which was up here. Okay. Right up here inside this do while loop. Okay. So when we typed in yes, end game request is true, it's, it returns out of this method, and our focus is still coming back up to this main method right here with the, the do while loop. And okay, so this condition is no longer true, so it exits out of the loop, says thanks for playing, calls the method program exit, bounces back down here to program exit, and that's where this line of code came from. The system will now exit. All right, lots of fun. Okay, it's all over the place, but well, that's what we do in computer science. All right, so thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video, which will be building out the uh, method that elaborates on the room two here. All right, we'll see you later. Thanks.